I don't see a contradiction between religion and science, or if you want to, spirituality and science at all. I don't see that because my knowledge of science and 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 the world when I get dive into astronomy or um, you know even biology or any number of phys even physics, you know what what it seems to me is that the more I learn, the more it seems like there's this grand order to things. You know, and and I just, I have a very difficult time reconciling the idea that all of creation is just the consequence of some kind of random interaction of matter and energy. There's something else going on here. You know, now I don't know what to, you know, maybe this is what I would call God, but I've had experiences in my life, which we can talk about in a future podcast, that have led me... I like that you keep mentioning future podcasts. That's making oh, me good. happy. Well, I mean, there, there, <laughs> there's so much we can talk about, but, you know, I've had yeah, right. personal experiences, which, you know, you might call, um, you know, a mystical experience or a sense of that oneness, or, I, you know, I hate to even use words because words don't really describe some of these experiences that I've had a couple of in my life that have convinced me that there's far more to existence than meets the eye. And, you know, it, for me, it is, it's a, it's a great, it's a miracle and a mystery at the same time. And I'm constantly in a state of wonder and awe at this whole creation that we're a part of. Right. So I, you know, it's interesting because I came up in a very agnostic type of a household. I don't ever remember my father going to church once. He never talked about religion, anything. My mother, you know, my, my mother's parents were, were Southern Baptists, so they were very strict and very fundamentalist. I lived with them for a year and got hauled off to church twice a week, um, stuffed into my suit, you know, when I was nine years old and hauled off to church. And uh, I didn't, well, I didn't like it. Um, but, you know, now my perspective is, is that I kind of came up free of the dogmas that like, for example, you were brought up in a religious household is what I'm in, in, taking, right? You were brought up in a, at some point it became, it religious. became religious. Yeah. It became okay. religious. Yeah. Well, see, I had a Catholic father and a Mormon. Oh, I had an inactive Catholic father and an inactive Mormon I mother, see. but we, then that started a kind of journey that maybe I'll talk about some other oh, episode. Okay. Well, my 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 can, my first association or exposure to religion was my mother would when we were little she would read us Bible so I still in fact have the same book that we had in our family as a little kid with nice color plates and I loved Bible stories I loved Bible stories in the same way I loved Greek mythology and Norse mythology um, you know and so I really I, I ate up all the Bible stories um, but we were never really inculcated into any particular religious dogma. For me, it was like I was totally not religious, 17 years old, and then I did certain things that did this, blew my mind. And I basically, you know, I was, it was an experience. I've talked about it several times um, on a camping trip, southwestern Minnesota, and I had a, experience that still with me to this day um, where it was as if all, all I could say and, and again I even hate to try to describe it because the words are so completely um, you know inept at, at conveying what it was but it was as if the heavens opened before me and I had this direct experience and awareness of the glories of God living through the creation and that totally put me on a path that I'm still on, basically, you know, um, just, I don't even know how to describe it really. Um, other than that, the whole of creation seemed like it just, the, the quote from that I just read from Psalms sort of sums that up. That's why when I remember the first time I ever read that quote, I thought that reminds me of that day in summer of 1969. I know it was right around the time of the, um, right about the time of the moon landing, as a matter of fact, uh, which was in July. And I'm thinking this was probably in June. I had just gotten out of high school and I was uh, down at uh, Pipestone, Minnesota, which was sacred to the Plains Indian tribes. It's where they quarried the 
red claystone for their peace pipes. And uh, it's a very unique place. And um, yeah, sometime I'll kind of go into that. Um, but yeah, that set me off on a pathway that I'm still on. It led me to, you know, reading the Bible, but I also read the Bhagavad Gita, the Bundahish, the Tao Te Ching. And it seemed like, you know, all of these, it, it was like, well, wait a second, they're all kind of basically looking at the same thing, but from different perspectives, different philosophical, different cultural uh, perspectives. But, you know, when I read the, the Bhagavad Gita or the Mahabharata, you know, I mean, I'm constantly going, oh, you know, the Bible, the Mahabharata. Why would God limit his revelation to just one people at one time? That's what I begin to question. And I'm thinking, it seems to me that these dogmas want to put constrictions upon the work of God and say, only this, only then. Whereas I begin to think, well, wait a second. I, to me, God is like always present. And when there's a people who are receptive to the presence of the divine, God will reveal. And I use himself just, you know, um, because I put, in my mind, God is beyond those kinds of dichotomies. 